A gap lies between our moment and the speed of transformation America experienced mid-century. Progress has slowed. Yes, large language models astonish us. Rockets still turn our eyes upwards and satellites envelop the globe. But as we look forward to America's 250th birthday celebration next year, our progress today pales in comparison to the huge leaps of the 20th century. Consider the country of 50 years ago. As the nation approached its bicentennial, Americans looked forward to electricity that was too cheap to meter. By the end of 1972, 30 nuclear power plants were operational. 55 were under construction and more than 80 were planned or ordered. That same year, Apollo 17 astronauts became the 11th and 12th men to walk on the moon. Five years before, the X-15 rocket plane had set a speed record for a crewed aircraft of Mach 6.7. America was flying higher, faster, and further than ever before. Today, however, energy prices still burden producers and consumers alike, and the grid remains precarious. Over the past 30 years, only three commercial nuclear reactors have been built and 10 have closed. Despite spending almost twice as much on healthcare as peer nations, we have the lowest life expectancy. Apollo 17 steps on the lunar surface have proved mankind's last. The X-15's record still stands and the Concorde was decommissioned more than two decades ago. Our passenger planes are slower than they used to be. Our trains crawl compared to those in other parts of the world. Our cars do not fly. Advances have not stopped, but something has gone wrong. Stagnation was a choice. We have weighed down our builders and innovators. The well-intentioned regulatory regime of the 1970s became an ever-tightening ratchet, first hampering America's ability to become a net energy exporter and then making it harder and harder to build. We seem to have lost focus and vision to have lowered our sights and let systems and structures and bureaucracies muddle us along. But we are capable of so much more. Our technologies permit us to manipulate time and space. They leave distance annihilated, cause things to grow and improve productivity. As Vice President Vance said in a recent speech, the tradition of American innovation has been one of increasing the capacities of America's workers of extending human ability so that more people can do more and more meaningful work. But unrestricted immigration and reliance on cheap labor, both domestically and offshore, has been a substitute for improving the productivity with technology. We can build in new ways that let us do more with less, or we can borrow from the future. We have chosen to borrow from that future again and again. Our choice as a civilization is technology or debt, and we have chosen debt. Today, we choose a better way. Our first assignment is to secure America's preeminence in critical and emerging technologies. This administration will ensure that our nation remains the leader in the industries of the future, with a strategy of both promotion and protection, protecting our greatest assets and promoting our greatest innovators.